Now that we've learned so much about stereoisomers, let's go back to the tree diagram and let's expand on it. So at first when we drew this tree, tree diagram, we said there were two different types of isomers. There were constitutional isomers and stereo isomers. And we talked about the difference between constitutional and stereo isomers, primarily being that constitutional isomers will have different connectivity. And because they have different connectivity, they have very different names. And they can be easily distinguished by their names. Stereo isomers have the same connectivity. They have something different about their shape but their connectivity is the same, which means that their IUPAC name is gonna come out the same and we have to put a prefix in front of the name to indicate the particular shape of the molecule. And there really isn't much more to say about constitutional isomers, that's pretty much it. Stereoisomers, there are two different types that we looked at. Um, stereoisomers can be mirror images of each other and those we call enantiomers. The enantiomers, or the mirror images, these are the ones that we represent using the wedge and the dash notation, and we distinguish them from each other using the R and the S prefixes. The other type of stereoisomer is called a diastereomer. Diastereomers are stereoisomers, so they have the same connectivity, but they are not mirror images of each other. Diastereomers can also be distinguished from each other using R and S notation. And if we're looking at an alkene, we would use the cis and trans notation. So the idea of a diastereomer is kind of confusing when you just look at it on um, paper in words, but if we draw some examples of diastereomers, it's gonna make total sense. So let's draw a molecule that has two chiral centers. We won't worry about assigning stereochemistry, but there's two chiral carbons in this molecule. And if we wanted to draw the enantiomer of this molecule, you know one of the ways that we can go about doing that is to leave the connectivity exactly the same so we're not actually drawing a mirror image and we're just switching the wedge for the dash and the dash for the wedge. So these two molecules, their relationship to each other is that they are enantiomers because they are mirror images of each other. So let's move this. What would be a diastereomer of this molecule here? A diastereomer is gonna have the exact same connectivity. So I'm not gonna draw the, the bonds to the bromine in yet, but we know that the connectivity is gonna be exactly the same, so there's gonna be bonds here. But it's not, let's draw, this is gonna be a diastereomer of this guy right here. So they're gonna have the same connectivity, but they're not gonna be mirror images of each other. What might that look like? Well, what if both of the bromines were on a wedge? So these two have the exact same connectivity, but they're not mirror images. So these would be diastereomers. And also, this molecule and this molecule would be diastereomers of each other as well. If we wanted to draw the enantiomer of this guy, we can draw a lot of different versions of this molecule. If we wanted to draw its enantiomer, then we would change both of the wedges to dashes. So now we have another relationship. These two are enantiomers. They are mirror images of each other. But if we compare this molecule to this one, these two are diastereomers because they're not mirror images. And these two are also diastereomers, not mirror images.